Today we're going to work on a solo arrangement of In My Life by The Beatles. This was actually voted on over at my Patreon page where every month we do a suggestion and song vote to figure out what the month's tutorial is going to be. So check that out in the description below where you can also find a tab of this. But let's go ahead and jump into the intro. Now I actually think the intro is one of the harder parts of the song. So if you're able to play this, you're going to be able to play the verse and chorus pretty easily too. So we're going to start here with our high G or low G. We can play it with either tuning ukulele. And we're going to take our index finger and we're going to bar it across the fifth fret here. And then we're going to take our pinky finger and place it on the eighth fret of the A string so that we have this sort of shape. Now you don't actually have to play the G string, so it's okay for that bar to come down and just be on the C and E if that makes it a little bit easier to hit the strings. We're going to start by plucking the C and E strings together. You can use your thumb and index finger, or you can use your index and middle. It doesn't really matter as long as you're able to get that sound. Then you're going to play the 8 on the A. Then you're going to play the 5 on the E by itself. Then you're going to play 6 on the E, just taking your middle finger, adding it there. Then move your pinky finger up to 8 on the E from the A string. And then take your ring finger, place it on seven of the A, and take everything else off and pluck all four strings or strum through all four with your thumb. And that's actually the whole intro. Because what happens here is when we go on to the next measure, it just repeats. And then from this point, it plays the first two words of the verse. So those first two words are going to be there are, being the zero on the C and then the two on the C. And I can just use my middle finger there. This then starts the next section, which is the verse. Uh, it's pretty straightforward overall. We're gonna start by playing zero on the C and three on the E together. Take your ring finger, place it on the third fret of the E string. That's the word play of places. I like to use my index and middle fingers for kind of a four finger picking, but you can use your thumb and index or just your thumb even whatever works for you. Then I'm gonna play the one on the E string with my index finger for the word is, play says, place the three back on, I open on the A, three. And then for member, if you leave your index finger there on the first fret of the E string from play says, you then can have that already in place, add your middle finger on two of the C and your ring finger here to three of the A for member. And then we play open on the A for er. So I remember. So, or remember. So places I remember. So I just kind of leave that one on that whole time. Now there's a little filler note here. You'll notice there's no lyric associated. So whenever you have a note with no lyric, you just play those a little bit softer. And it's still that one on the E string. So our index finger is just kind of chilling there. And we add our ring finger to three of the C. We play it again, nice and soft though. Then we're gonna play three on the E. And I actually like to move my ring finger down to this three and kind of leave it there and then open on the A for all my. And the reason I like to use my ring finger is for this word life. What we're going to do is leave the ring finger where it is. And then we're going to move our index finger up to the second fret of the C string and our middle finger here to the third fret of the G string. And we're gonna pluck those three strings together. You can also strum it with your thumb, whatever is easier. That's for the word life. But when they play life, they kind of go live <laughs> as they go through. And so the way we do this is we play that. And then we play open on the A, one on the E, or excuse me, three on the E, which is already played, right? So it plays open A, three on the E. But then to finish live, it goes live, and then live. That's why I said one on the E a little bit ago, is because I was getting excited for this next part, which is going to be one on the C and E. And I actually like to just bar my finger across the first fret on the C, E, and A strings to do this. I find that that's the most effective way to, to play it, especially because we're gonna be using this bar later in the song. So it's good to get some practice right now. Then you're gonna play one on the C, Do, and then open on the C for the word sum, and then open on the A for half, and then an F chord, two middle finger on the second fret, zero, one index finger on the first fret, the E string, strum through it all or pick through it all for the word changed. And then at the end of this, it's just going to go sum four, 
which is the same little pickup that we did on measure four for there are. So here's what the whole first part of the verse sounds like, measures five, six, seven, and eight. It should be something like this. Places I remember all my life, though some have changed. Some four. Now, when you're playing this, it's okay to use what's called rubato. Rubato is a musical term to kind of play with feeling. So while there are rhythmic markers here, it's not of the utmost importance to follow them exactly because it actually sounds better when you play it with a little bit more feeling, right? It is a very, very sentimental song after all. So as we go here to measure nine, what's cool is measures nine, 10, 11, and the first half of 12 are actually exactly the same in every way to five, six, seven, and eight. So if you learn those first measures, these measures, ever not for better, some have gone, <laughs> and some remain. That's all exactly the same. Different words, but the same notes being played. And it doesn't change until the very last two notes of measure 12 where it goes all these, and that starts the chorus of the song. So that we can hear it though, here's the whole verse. I'm gonna play from the pickup bar of measure four all the way through measure 12. And so those are, that's the, there are places I remember all my life, though some have changed, some forever, not for better, not, some have gone and some remain. So that should sound something like this, nice and slow, it should be like, Now from here we go on to the chorus. The chorus is a little bit more basic, but a little bit more movement in the melody because it's playing a lot more melody notes. We're gonna start here with this kind of D minor chord, but all that you do is take your middle finger, place it on the second fret of the C string, index finger on the first fret of the E, and pluck our C, E, and A together, or using our thumb, strum it through. Again, it doesn't really matter. And that's P of places. And now what happens here is they kind of double up the word or the notes to the syllable. So it goes places had their moments. I can't sing to save my life. But you can hear it kind of goes with. And so when you're playing this, just keep in mind that it's not one syllable per note. They kind of have that draw going through. So we're gonna play the C, E, and A. Then you leave those fingers where they are, add the ring finger on three of the E, play that twice. Then take that off, play the one, which should already be there with your index, play that twice. And then two on the C twice, which is already there. And then one on the E. And so that's uh, going through play, A, C, excuse me. See, I'm messing it up because I'm trying to read as I go through. Pl play, A, C, S, have, it's terrible, right? So it's best to kind of hear it and feel it sound something like. <laughs> Much easier than trying to tie those multiple syllables. But it is there on the tab in case that helps as you're going through. And then we go to the word moments. Now we're, we've been holding this two and one on the C and E string this whole time. But the ring finger is just going to kick up to the third fret of the G string. And you're going to strum through all four strings. And that's mo, and then mince, you're gonna take your pinky and play it on three of the E. And then open on the A string. So that's moments with. Then we're going to go to this lovely E flat chord for the word lovers. The way we do this, middle finger is going to go up to three on the C string, ring finger on three of the E string, and index here on one of the A. Go through all four strings. Then take the index off for open on the A. And three on the E with the ring, which is already there. And take the ring off and add the index on one, the E. So that's lovers and friends. And then we're gonna play one on the C. And to do that, we just take these fingers off, move the index up one to one on the C, play that by itself for the word I. And then open C. 
and then we're going to play open on the A twice, and then an F chord. And that's for the words, so we have lovers and friends, I still can recall. And then we're going to play one on the E, which is already there, and three on the E with the ring. And as we go on now to measure 17, it's not exactly the same, but it starts off exactly the same. Measure 17 and 13 were the same, so that's going... So that's exactly the same, but that's going dead, and some are living. And when we go living, that's where it changes a little bit. We're going to play this chord 0210. So we're already holding this from measure 17, but now we strum through all four strings. And we're going to play three on the E with the ring finger. And then we've got a filler chord. It's this little G7. So what we do there is we leave these two fingers, add the ring finger onto two of the A string. And I like to use just like the pad of my thumb. Strum it nice and soft because it's all supposed to be filler. And we're going to play the word in, which is two on the C, in. It gets a little tricky here. What we're going to do is that little bar that I was talking about earlier in the song, the bar across one. Well, this is why, it's the first place we're using it. Bar your index there across the C and E and A. We're only going to be playing the C and the E strings with this. So if your A string isn't quite pushed down, that's okay. It's really important right now to get those two together. Then you're going to take your pinky and add it to fret four of the E string. Now when you're doing this, get right up next to those fret wires with both of these pieces and it makes it much easier to get a good tone. We're going to pluck the C and E together. And that's the word my. And then we're going to play three on the E with our ring finger. So it goes. And then this is, I think, probably the hardest part of the song. We're going to play one on the E, which is part of that bar. Then we're going to hammer on to three on the E. And then we're going to play the one again. And when we play that hammer on, it's with our ring finger. And then we're going to play one on the C. So that whole measure goes something like this. My life. I. So that takes some extra practice, right? So we have. And then from there, it goes open C. And then through an F chord, followed by an open A. So nice and simple, at least to end it after that difficulty. But let's look at measure 19 again. So it goes, my I life, I've loved them all. So let's hear the whole chorus now. I'm gonna start with measure 13, which is the beginning of the chorus. I'm actually gonna start just before measure 13 at the end of 12 so that we get the words, all these places I read, or all these places had their moments going through the words. And we're gonna go all the way through measure 20. And so that should sound something like this. right so that's the whole chorus now at this point if you want to be accurate to the original song you can actually repeat this and you can go all the way back to measure three which is going to be the intro being played again um, and so it goes but then it goes back through and it plays the verse again and we go all the way through the verse This exactly the same way as we went through and then we go into the chorus And so we repeat that whole thing if we want to be accurate to the original. You'll notice in the performance I did to start this, I actually didn't do the repeat just to save some time to make the arrangement a little bit shorter. But to add some body, you can repeat it. But after you've done that repeat, or after you've skipped it if you decide you didn't want to play it, 
we then go to my personal favorite part of the song, the solo. Now, normally this solo, when you listen to the Beatles' original version, they've got this beautiful harpsichord solo, or, or synthesized harpsichord, I should say, but it sounds really nice. So I tried to keep some of the integrity of that, uh, but I made it a little bit different and made it truly for ukulele. And this is a really great instance of using finger picking. So you can use four or three finger picking. Uh, you'll notice that we actually don't play the G string at all during this solo. So three finger picking works great. Thumb on the C string, index finger on the E string. Oh, thumb on the C string. I think I said that. Index on the E string and middle here on the A. So we have one finger per string, omitting the, the G there. So what I'm going to start here is I'm going to start with my index finger on one of the E. I'm going to play the C and E together. And then I'm going to add three on the E with my ring and open on the A. Then I'm going to play one on the E again. Then I'm going to switch to a C chord. So all that I do there is take my ring finger, place it on three of the A, take the other finger off, play the C, E, and A together. Open on the E, zero on the C, zero on the E. Now you'll notice these are all just running eighth notes, which means the timing is actually really easy and counts. Just one and two and three and four and, and most of the solo is going to do that. So the first measure of the solo is recommend practicing it one measure at a time to start. Then we go to measure 22. We're going to take the middle finger, place it on two of the C, open on the E, one on the E with the index, open on the A, and then we're going to play this spicy little chord. If we leave our index finger here on the one of the E, we then just add our ring finger to three of the C, play our C, E, and A together, one on the E, which is already there, and three on the C, which is already there, then one on the E again. So measure 22 is. Now from here on measure 23, remember that bar across one I mentioned a couple times? Well, this is another instance where we need it, but this time we need it across the C, E, and A strings. So what I like to do is take that and bar all the way across and get right up next to that fret wire. Just so you know, the hardest place to bar an ukulele is on the first fret. Always. And that makes it a real pain in the butt. So we want to get right up next to that fret wire and try to push and even, you know, kind of clamp down and pull back just a tad to pinch it over that string, just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pluck those strings, but we're going to pluck them one at a time and we're going to add one more finger. <laughs> so we're going to take the middle finger, play the second fret on the C string. So you see we've got this bar and this finger here. And you might be thinking, why do I need the bar? when that's there and just trust me, I promise there's a reason. And we're gonna play the one on the E, or excuse me, the one on the A, then the one on the E, then the two on the C, and the one on the E again, the one on the A again. And then we're gonna play the one on the E, and then we're gonna take this middle finger off so it's just barred across the one and play the C string, which now is the one on the C. And then we're going to play one on the E again. So it goes like this. Now that's hard. It's easy for your hand to get worn out with that. That's probably probably the hardest part of the song uh, at that point. That, that or measure 19. They both are difficult for the same sort of reasons. So measure 23 sounds something like this. And then from here we go on measure 24. Really nice and simple. Just that index goes down to one on the E. We're going to play open on the A, one on the E, zero on the C, one on the E, and open on the A and then it repeats the solo. So that last bar 24. So here's what the solo sounds like with the repeat. make sure I play it right. The reason I was stalling there is because you'll notice that last note of 24 is a half note. So we play that one and we play it and hold it for two beats. Three and four. And so here's the repeat. But then on the second time through, so you'll notice there's a second ending, we play the exact same thing, but instead of holding that last note for a half note, it's held for only one beat because then we go all these. And then from this point, it actually goes right back in 
to the chorus. So going in the chorus, it's going to go play a <laughs> so, exactly the same as what we played earlier. You notice I started with the words and realized that was a bad idea and try to line those up. But it's exactly the same as measure 13. Places have their moments, right? And then we go with the same sort of stuff that we did before um, with lovers and friends, I still can recall. Um, and that's going to be the same as what we played before. And so that sounds something like this. Starting at the beginning of this second chorus goes something like. Exactly the same, then goes some, R, and then So all of that is the same stuff. So if you learn that earlier in the song, you'll recognize it here. It's exactly the same. We go on now to measure 31. That's going to be living with the G7, right? We played that earlier in the song. And then in, and then my life, I've loved them. So that's all the same that we've already learned. And then it goes on to the intro again. And so all of that is just repeating, recycled. But then at the end of measure eight, we're going to start the outro. And to do this, we're gonna play eight on the E string. And we're gonna take our index finger and move it up there to the eight on the E, okay? So let's go ahead and hear what this whole last chorus sounds like, okay? Um, so starting at 26, going through it, something like. Now that last note in, eight on the A, E, excuse me, eight on the E string. We're then gonna move on to the outro. And with this outro, it's pretty crazy. We're gonna take our pinky, stretch it out to 11 on the A string. Then we're gonna take our middle finger and place it on nine of the E string. So we're gonna play those two strings together. And then we're gonna play 10 on the A with our ring finger. And then that index is gonna go to eight on the A string. And we're gonna hammer on to 10 on the A string with the ring finger and then play the eight again there. So it goes something like this. And that's the high part when you listen to them sing the song originally in, and then my, uh, in my life. That's the end of the vocal part. And to finish the song, all that we do is play the intro again. exactly as we normally do, but then we add this little riff at the very end, which is going to be playing 7 on the A, which should already be there from the 0007. We're going to play just the 7 on the A, and then 5 on the A, index finger there to 5 on the A. 7 on the A with the ring again. And then we're going to build an F chord, bar across 5, add 8 on the A, which is the same thing we played at the very beginning of the song, and strum through all four strings. So this is what the outro sounds like, and I'm actually going to start it with that in, the eight on the E so that you can hear it, but it goes in and then I So you'll notice a lot of dissonance there, right, with that. And you can really hold that let ring. there is In My Life by the Beatles arranged for solo ukulele. So if you've enjoyed this video, please support me on Patreon or at least consider doing so. It's really thanks to all of my patrons I'm able to make these tutorials and share this with the, the world. And so, um, yeah, thank you to everybody who has supported me with it. It's a lot of fun to see what songs they think up. We've got a lot of other cool things that are taking place on it as well. So if you'd like to help decide what next month's tutorial is, be sure to check that out in the link down below. As always, if you have any questions though, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll see you guys next month for the next song tutorial. Thanks so much.